keep as a pattern, keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Now, 1 Timothy, in 1 Timothy he says, watch your life and your doctrine closely. In 2 Timothy he says, keep the path. In other words, what I taught, the way I taught it, do it the way I done it. See, because Apostle Paul, he did it the way he done it, but he done it the way Jesus Christ done it. See, nothing is original. Let me say this to you. If I'm teaching it, then I need to be able to go to the Word of God, if it's doctrine, and I need to say to you, not only am I teaching this, Jesus Christ taught this. I need to be able to say to you that the apostles taught this. Because that's the governmental structure and the makeup of the church. Jesus Christ and the apostles. You understand that? Now, let's look at a couple more verses. Let's look at a couple more verses. In 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 13, verse 6, it's, it says, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 9. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. Let me say that again. Do not be carried away. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes we go to these churches, we don't even care what the underlying support is. We don't even care what the governmental structure is. All we care about is we didn't connect it to some, re some title, some affiliation uh, through our heritage or through our own level of understanding and we make a decision to go be a part of the church. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you how dangerous that is. You don't want to go anywhere you don't know what that church believes and why that church believes it. And then once you find out, well, how do you find out? Well, whatever church you belong to, I want to make a suggestion. Uh, ask the pastor for the doctrinal statement or the statement of faith. And then you go down systematically through that doctrinal statement, the statement of faith. And whatever they're teaching in your church, you need to make sure that Jesus Christ taught. Let me give you an example. I'm, I'm going to talk about some centralized truths that, that most churches talk about. Most churches believe this is part of their doctrine in salvation. It means that if we repent of our sins and we confess Jesus Christ as Lord and then invite him in our heart, they will say it. Most churches believe that. That goes under the heading of Christian church, be it Christian church affiliation or religious affiliation. Most religious Christian churches believe you heard me mention Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, Pentecostals. Most of those religious churches believe in salvation. They believe that Jesus died for our sin. That's part of their doctrinal belief. But that's what, what we have to do is we have to watch it closely. Because what a deceiving spirit is, it presents a measure of truth, and then it will deceive you. For example, It'll present something that's true because what I just said about salvation is true. But then if I'm going to bring you into something that God had nothing to do with, what's true about that? If I'm going to bring you into something, a, a, an affiliation that Jesus had nothing to do with, listen to me. He didn't teach it, he didn't produce it, but I'm going to use his name to get you saved. So I'm going to use his name as a bait, then I'm going to lure you in to my religious affiliation. What's wrong with that picture? Well, there's some very wrong with that picture. And what we're talking about is doctrine. Because what happens, once you get reeled in, then whatever that religious affiliation is, they're going to teach you their religious beliefs about that affiliation. And religious beliefs about one's affiliation has nothing to do with the teaching of Jesus Christ. Why do I say that? Because Jesus did not establish religion. Blessed are your ears if they can hear. In your heart if it understands. Now, what am I saying? And what does this have to do with doctrine? Doctrine is one of the major reasons that the church is divided. Listen, when I say it's the major reason that church is divided, remember the verse that I gave in St. John chapter 14, verse 6, which states, Jesus is the way. Huh? The way is the blueprint. Jesus is the architect. It's already been done, saints of God, leaders. 
leaks. It's already been done. All we have to do is follow the blueprint. Let me give you a parallel example. Just like your house, your structure. Before it was built, there was a, listen, there was a graphic made of that structure, right? The architect, come on, the blueprint. And then somebody came in and followed the blueprint. Jesus is the blueprint. Every leader has a responsibility to follow the blueprint. Does this make sense? It makes a lot of sense to me. Now, when it says Jesus is the way, now what's happening is everybody else is getting in the way. But I'm going to show you why that's happening. Because we have a deceiving spirit that's in the church today. A deceiving spirit. Teaching something other than Jesus taught. Producing something other than Jesus produced. If you're teaching something other than Jesus taught, huh? you heard me say everything produces according to his kind. Now, when we talk about religion, if you notice, every religious group reproduces itself. Did you notice that? I'm not talking about Jesus Christ. You know, I talk to many people, you know, many Christians, uh, many religious believers. And because uh, we be in the field a lot, you know, talking about and promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ and sharing, you know, sharing the gospel of Christ. And a lot of times we get this type of response. Well, I'm a Baptist. I'm a Catholic. I'm a Methodist. What does it have to do with Jesus Christ? Now, if you get saved and you give your life to Christ and you come into something that God had nothing to do with, that Jesus is not the head of, and I make an appeal to you today that when there's false doctrine, there's a false Jesus. Let me say that again. When there's false doctrine, there's a false Jesus. Why do I say that? Well, I want us to look at something. We're going to look, we're going to look a little bit more into the scriptures as we talk about the danger, the danger. I'm going to talk about the danger of, of false doctrine. And, and we want to examine ourselves as we look at Christ, as we look at Christ, as we look at our own religion. And I'm challenging you today. Who are you following? Do you know your doctrine? Or do you just go to church? You know what? Many people just go to church. They don't even care. They just go. <clears throat> go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. It says, The Spirit clearly says that in latter times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical line whose conscience has been seared